Welcome to the November 3rd meeting of the Folsom Cordova Unified School District Board of Education. Uh, Superintendent, will you take the roll, please? Yes, Mr. Reed. Here. Mr. Hoover. I, uh, Mr. Here. <laughs> Mr. Clark. Here. Mr. Short. Here. Mr. Huey. Here. All are accounted for. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, before we go into closed session, is there any public comment online? No one's in the audience. So uh, the board will be going into closed session uh, to uh, discuss matters, uh, uh, student matters, uh, including uh, uh, an expulsion um, case number 2122-3S, uh, employer employee relations conference with legal counsel, conference with real property negotiators, and personnel matters. The board will be back in open session at 6 p.m. sharp, and uh, we will are adjourned.
All right, we're back from closed session. Uh, welcome to the November 3rd meeting of the Folsom Cordova Unified School District Board of Education. Uh, if you would uh, please uh, stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, a broadcast statement. A broadcast and recording is being made at the direction of the board and the broadcast may capture images and sounds of those attending the meeting. The meeting is being live streamed on the district's YouTube channel. Folsom Cordova Unified School District Board Policy 1313 promotes mutual respect, civility, and orderly conduct among employees, parents, and the public. We will treat staff, parents, and members of the public with respect and expect the same in return. If any member of the public uses obscenities or communicates in a demanding, loud, insulting, and or demeaning manner, the board will calmly and politely admonish the person to communicate civilly. Per the Brown Act, the board is not allowed to enter into a two-way discussion on any matter not on the agenda. All right, Superintendent, will you take the roll, please? Yes. Ms. Perez? Here. Ms. Srivastav? Here. Mr. Reed? Here. Mr. Hoover? Here. Mr. Clark? Here. Mr. Short? Here. Mr. Huey? Hi. Here. All are accounted for. All right, thank you. Uh, let's see, agenda item five, reporting out of closed session. Superintendent? Yes, we do have board action to report out of closed session. Um, it was unanimous by the board in closed session to begin termination proceedings against two district teachers in two separate matters. Okay, thank you. Uh, next on the agenda is item six, adoption of the agenda. Is there a motion to adopt? I'll move it. Second. All right, a motion by Mr. Clark, second by Mr. Short. Superintendent, uh, take the roll, please. Yes, Ms. Perez? Aye. Ms. Srivastav? Aye. Mr. Reed? Aye. Mr. Hoover? Aye. Mr. Clark? Aye. Mr. Short? Aye. Mr. Huey? Aye. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. All right. Agenda item seven, special presentations. Uh, Superintendent. Yes, we're very excited this evening to um, highlight uh, a very special school, our Folsom Community Charter School, with our new principal, Ms. Mercedes Kirk. I'm going to invite Mercedes and her um, uh, team to come forward and talk about I I was Our thinking team. there'd be yeah. it's, a, it's a team of two but it's a powerful yes, we're team missing a family and okay. I'm, I'm hoping that they show up because the two sons were supposed to speak with us so mm -hmm. but I um, I'll begin okay <laughs> well welcome all right um, and the, the family is not William Marlowe it's Elizabeth Marlowe and Dan Robody is sick today too so unfortunately um, anyways Good evening, members of the board, Dr. Collegian, student board members, and members of the audience. My name is Mercedes Kirk, and I am the proud principal of the Folsom Cordova Charter Homeschool. I'm here to present about our homeschool and how it provides an alternative program that is a bridge to equity for many of our students. I'm joined here tonight by one of our teachers, Laura Cataldo, um, parent Elizabeth Marlowe and her sons and homeschool students, Monty and Alistair Marlowe, will hopefully arrive shortly. <laughs> um, it would be a shame not to hear their stories. Um, OK, doing two things here. Did I just point it? Is that it? Good. <laughs> Allow me to introduce our school. The Folsom Cordova K-8 Charter Homeschool opened its doors in 2004 to provide a, an alternative program for FCUSD families who chose to homeschool their children. Our main campus is at the old Kitty Hawk school site in Mather, but we also have two Folsom annexes for family meetings and weekly student workshops. Our enrollment is currently at 165 with about half of our students in middle school. We focus on supporting our homeschool parent guardian teachers along with meeting the academic and socio-emotional needs of our students. Our beautiful Mather campus is the perfect place to meet our families, host family events, and hold kindergarten through eighth grade workshops. Our teachers, called educational consultants, meet with each family for about an hour every two weeks. During these meetings, students share and review their schoolwork, 
and what they are most excited about learning. Educational consultants track students' academic progress and check on the well-being of the family and child. Our educational consultants work with the homeschool teacher to create lessons that engage the student, and together they determine the pace that best meets the needs of the students. Relevance to students. Our homeschool program offers a bridge to equity for our students and connects students to learning in a unique way. Many of our families decided to homeschool before ever enrolling their child in a comprehensive classroom setting. They already knew that homeschooling would be an integral part of their parenting and family lifestyle. But other families chose our program after discovering that the classroom setting did not fully meet the needs of their child. For a variety of reasons, some of our students were struggling to keep up with the curriculum, while others were not feeling challenged to their potential. We have students with medical conditions that prevent them from participating in a traditional classroom, and we also have students with autism who found the daily challenges of social interactions in classrooms to be a barrier to academic success. For whatever reason a parent or student has chosen to enroll in our program, we offer a safe place where all students can feel connected to school and develop a sense of belonging. Students can learn at their own pace without being rushed or slowed down. Our highly engaging workshops are well attended. Students look forward to seeing their friends, working collaboratively with peers, and getting messy with art and science. We also offer family social events where parents and guardians connect with each other. On September 28th, we had over 200 students, family members, and staff on our Mather campus to view the Capitol Air Show. We barbecued hot dogs, and the kids made paper airplanes as jets entertained us overhead. We had our first trunk or treat costume parade <laughs> this past Thursday, and the turnout was fantastic. This, the year's first field trip to the Fog Willow Pumpkin Patch was attended by 35 students and their family members. These events all help create connections between school, family, and students, and provide important social inner opportunities for our homeschool students and parents. Not sure why it's not. A, thank you. <laughs> um, this is a picture of our trunk or treat event last uh, last week, and yes, that's me riding the unicorn <laughs> <laughs> with the car bucks trunk or treat behind us. How did we get here? Over the years, our enrollment has grown from forty two to one hundred and sixty five students. However. I must add that during the COVID school closures, if you remember, in the fall of, of, 80, of 2020, we provided a lifeline for many families wanting more control and seeking alternatives to distance learning. In August 2020, our enrollment shot up from 145 to 800 students, but held steady from at 660 for most of the year. Our staff is happy to have returned to, a more, man to more manageable numbers. Families love our program and the high level of support, frequency of family meetings, and opportunities for social interactions. We will continue focusing on meeting the academic and socio-emotional needs of our students and always look forward to when our students successfully transition back into our middle schools and our high schools. Something else we look forward to is welcoming Dr. Collegian and board members and FCA reps to our campus on January 12th, when you will see our students in the workshops. I'd like to answer questions, but first I'd like for others to share their stories. So I'll pass the mic to Laura Cataldo, and we can all answer questions at the end. Thank you for your time. My name is Laura Cataldo, and this is my 15th year working at the charter school. And I have twins, and the funny thing is they're actually in the picture right up here. So my daughter, Rebecca, has the red and white striped shirt on the side, and my son is in the white t-shirt. And this has taken a very long time ago because now they're in college, and they're both 20. <laughs> so, <laughs> so a long know, time ago. Cute. But I, that was such a special day because that's when we actually were a part of the Veterans Day Parade, and we had an opportunity to um, have a float. And so I have lots of special memories from that picture. But 
It's fun that you chose that right now. So I homeschooled them at the charter school. I started that when they were in kindergarten and I did that for many years. And it was wonderful because it, the charter school, the Folsom homeschool program quickly became like an extended family for our family. There are a lot of reasons why people choose to homeschool their children. You know, Mercedes talk, spoke about some of those reasons, but being able to modify curriculum and personalize instruction and meet emotional needs are some of the benefits. One of the ways that we strive to meet students' emotional needs is through weekly workshops. Our workshops are considered electives and students that choose to participate meet once a week at either our Mather or our Folsom locations. During these classes, kindness and compassion are emphasized through team building activities and thoughtful discussions. For example, by integrating service dogs into one of our workshops, a student with severe anxiety decided to talk about her hospital experience her mom shared how proud she was that her daughter went from having daily panic attacks to being able to stand in front of a group of students and talk about her feelings. In conclusion, empathy is a skill that Folsom Cordova Homeschool strives to develop. I'd also like to share part of a letter from a family who transitioned back to school within our district. Thank you for building my son's self-confidence in a way we were never able to. The charter truly prepared him to integrate back into traditional school. Thank you for your kindness and compassion for the past two years. This propelled him to where he is today. Thank you. Let's see if they have yeah. <laughs> Any questions? 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 Um, uh, yeah, Mr. Clark. Thank you for the presentations, Mercedes, um, and I'm glad that you're out there. Welcome aboard. Um, you mentioned something about a workshop, January 12th. Is there a time on that? I, I, I'm just, the time? I believe there's a time. I think it was around 10 a.m. Um, it's our board site visit. Oh, is it? Okay. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, you didn't give it, you just gave the date. But yeah, so um, I look forward to being out there, and you'll probably see me before then, but yeah. I know we do. Thank you. <laughs> we appreciate your visits. Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yeah, I just want to say thank you. You know, as someone who's had three kids spend some time in your program at some point, it's such a great option for our families, and I just really appreciate everything you guys are doing. So thank you. Thank you. Um, r remind me, uh, all right, so you had your main campus is over... Um, at May th or uh, uh, at, the, at May the old Kitty Hawk the, the School, the old Kitty Hawk yeah. School in Mayther. Um, where are your satellite? Um, is Folsom Middle is one, right? We have a, we have classroom four hundred one at Folsom Middle School, yep. and we have you at Gallardo. We have um, room eleven and room sixteen. When was Gallardo added? I believe last year. We had three okay. classrooms last year, okay. and we reduced them to two. Oh, it looks like your family might be here. Is that? <gasps> Oh, wonderful. Okay, do we have time? <laughs> perfect, oh. perfect okay. time. Okay, oh, wonderful. <laughs> okay, so I, come on up. Come on up, Marlo family. <laughs> um, good timing. We were just, we just finished our part, and oh, I'm so glad that you're here. So um, this is, who would like to speak first? Okay, we'll have Monty, Monty, Al uh, Monty Marlo will speak first, and I'll let you take the mic there, Mr. Thank you. Oh, God bless <laughs> good, e good evening. My name is Monty Marlowe. I am in second grade. I started school at um, my charter in traditional kindergarten. I like my older sisters and brother. I began school through homeschooling. Mrs. Cataldo has been my teacher since my first day. It is great that she knows me and has been with me as I grow and learn. I'm proud of my school and proud that my brother and sisters 
brother, sister and brother follow me to homeschool and we get to enjoy school together. Thank you. I'd like to introduce Alistair Marlowe. Welcome, Alistair. Hello. My name's Alistair Marlowe. I'm in the fifth grade, and I'm a student of the Folsom Cordova Community Charter School. I've been enjoying homeschool since the beginning of third grade. At home, I share my school day with my three siblings. Together, we are in kindergarten, second, fifth, and sixth grade. My parents converted our living room into a classroom with a shared work table, four cubbies for our books and supplies, and a whiteboard on the wall. Each Sunday, my mom organizes the curriculum for the week. Four days of the week, my dad teaches us at home. Also, once a week, each of my siblings and I practice our own extracurricular activities, including ballet, gymnastics, golf, and horseback riding. My time in the Folsom Cordova School District has included in class at Riverview STEM Elementary School for K through second grade, pandemic distance learning and homeschool instruction. I'm happy to share that my favorite education experience has been homeschool. Homeschool provides me with opportunities to learn at my pace, warp speed. <laughs> I can accelerate through studies and I know well that I grasp them quickly which then creates time for my parents and I to pause for a deeper dive into a topic or space for additional attention with a new concept. Homeschool gives me the flexibility to follow my curiosity. I can choose the books I want to read. <coughs> I can work with my parents to find resources that answer my big questions. Our homeschool day is structured, but it also fluid. We have a saying in our family that with homeschool, we get to learn, not wait. I no longer watch the time and wait for the school day to end. Now I enjoy school. Thank you for the support of my school. We, do we still have time? Absolutely. I'm, I'm, awesome. Yep. Okay, Elizabeth Marlowe. Okay. Good evening. Thank you for the time. Thank you for listening to my two boys. Um, that is two of my four children that are home with us, homeschool. Our family chose to homeschool for several reasons. This evening, I want to share two outcomes that my husband and I created through homeschooling our children. First is the opportunity to personalize curriculum and provide individual approaches for each child. Our, full ch our four children are in kindergarten, second, fifth, and sixth grades. Even though they are siblings, they are far from copies of one another. Each child learns very differently. For example, one consistently learns like building blocks, taking in each lesson as it comes. Another gathers information and then with a giant leap moves forward with the concepts. The next learns lessons and advances, but needs to circle back around to pick up what he missed. And we also have one who learns some lessons through direct um, instruction and repetition, but other skills and competencies arrive naturally through experiences. Homeschooling allows us as parents to directly see their different learning styles, appreciate them and allow us to tailor what and how we teach each child and it's amazing. Second, the absolute flexibility of homeschooling gives our family the time to explore personal passions for each of their children. Because we own the daily schedule, there's extra time where we as parents can fill their days with extracurricular activities, family bonding, memory making experiences, and even faith-based learning that traditional school could not fit. We are immensely grateful for our homeschool option at Folsom Cordova Community Charter that they provide us and we're great to support them tonight. Thanks. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for being um, one of our charter families. Um, any, uh, they may have questions. Yeah, any uh, questions uh, from the board? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much uh, for, for coming and sharing your experience with us. I appreciate that. All right. Uh, we will then move to agenda item eight, public comments. Are there any, uh, I don't see any blue cards. Are there any uh, comments from the public in person? Seeing none, are there any online? No one online, all right. Uh, 
so we'll move to agenda item nine, reports of district organizations. We'll start with the student advisory board. Our SAB meeting was held yesterday and we were glad to have had board member Reed, board member Clark and Dr. Kaligian present. At our meeting, we were led through an alcohol, tobacco and other drugs discussion and we heard lots of input from the students of emerging trends occurring throughout our schools. Students were interviewed for the diverse teacher recruitment video and then we were split into our subcommittees, which are mental health, school culture and climate and dress code to get to know each other and begin developing ideas and projects pertaining to the topic. Overall, our team has been fantastic and very engaged. And we also had a chance to discuss the student board member policy 9150 that was revised by um, an initiative by board member Gao last year. Um, our SAB reps agreed that the best model for a student board member policy is to have one from a secondary school in Rancho and one from a secondary school in Folsom. And many of our reps also expressed interest in attending the California Civic Learning Summit on November 15th. Um, so we are excited to partner with SCOE and getting many of our students there. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's see. Next would... Mr. President. Yeah. Uh, just a question for our student board members. Um, the summit, um, is there transportation provided for them? Yes. yes. Thanks to Dr. Kaligian, um and Superintendent Gordon, we are getting uh, transportation for our students there. Awesome. All right. Great. Thank you. All right, uh, let's see. Next is the California School Employees Association. Mr. Thomas, welcome. Thank you. Uh, good evening, President Reed, trustees, Dr. Kaligian. Um, we have made some great progress on compensation. Uh, for example, with our uh, mod severe paras and our bus drivers, we've made some, some big strides. Um, however, tonight, um, let's look at another group that we need to pay some attention to. Um, that's our clerical and administrative staff. Um, recently, uh, you heard from some of our middle school records clerks. Um, there's a, um, there are a lot of different folks in, in these positions across the district where they've seen some encroachment from other positions uh, to where there's very little differential for a lot of their positions versus other ones where there used to be a little more separation. And <clears throat> I mean, to some extent it's, it's uh, economic, but also to some extent it's uh, the, the desire to be recognized and appreciated. And as there's more encroachment, that becomes a, that becomes a, a big issue because we want, um, we really want our, our, our folks to know how much we value them and how important they are. Um, <clears throat> uh, not, not to, um, I'm, I'm going to do some comparison with custodians <clears throat> and it's not because, um, that we, we totally appreciate what custodians do. They're a very important part of our district, but certainly their positions are, are less technical and less, uh, less specialized than our clerical positions and the training required to get to a high level of competency in, in our clerical and, and uh, administrative positions is there's quite a longer road to, to get to that high level of expertise. Um, our uh, clerks make about what an entry-level uh, custodian makes. Um, that's, you know, we need to think about that because the loss of the institutional knowledge if we, if we do lose these folks um, is is huge, and our administrative assistants um, make about the same or less than our head custodians. These folks are the right hand of our principals and administrators. Um, as I said, the clerks have a lot of institutional knowledge. Our administrative assistants, they, the loss of them is huge. They know how they. They've, they've been with, with various administrators. They, many of them have been with the district for decades. Um, we really need to take a, a look at this group. Um, as, um, as has been said before, we, um, we, have, well, we have talked about this a little bit at negotiations and there have been a few things on our <coughs> plate of negotiations, but we need a little less talk and a lot more action. 
So uh, please, um, let's, let's retain these folks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Mr. Thomas, uh, just a quick question. So, you know, obviously, you know, with the minimum wage going up, you know, we, we always have these contraction issues uh, where the salaries get closer. Is there a particular position that the CSEA has on how to address that with um, the, the grades that are the closest to um, the entry-level salaries? Um, I think CSEA, big picture, yeah. wants everything to move up all, you know, all together. Same percent, um, by the same percentage? Yeah. And, um, however, I think we've seen um, in the past couple of years that there really, there were really some huge pain points in our salary schedule. And as much as it um, can cause some problems with the cohesiveness of our unit, I think we've done our best to work with the district to to make adjustments. Um, and I think that shows a lot of flexibility with our group here at Folsom Cordova and recognizing what we the services we need to provide for, for the students. I think we've got a really good group of folks that understand the impact they have on students. And so as much as that can cause a great deal of divisiveness, um, I think we've worked through that as much as possible. Um, so our philosophy in, in our group here, Folsom Cordova, I think is much more flexible than the big picture guidance. Um, and it's good that we, you know, we get advice, but we also need to look at our district and make the changes we need to make for our district, so. Yeah. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, then uh, let's see. Next on the agenda is uh, Folsom Cordova Education Association. Ms. McClose, welcome. Good evening. Okay, super short report tonight. Um, we've started some great site visits. I'm looking forward to the one to the charter school. Um, got to chat with Mercedes a little bit before coming in, and such good things are happening there. I love their program as an alternative to our students who learn a little differently. And we heard from the two students tonight. I mean, they are just thriving. It's so exciting to see that. Um, so the sites that we visited so far, Cordova Gardens, they have a fabulous STEAM focus. Um, I was so excited talking to Mr. Bliss and hearing about it. They have a great partnership with Soilborne Farms, um, fun experiments and lots of hands-on things happening there. Teachers are enthused, students are enthused, and it's just a really happy place to be. Carl Sundahl had their first walking field trip, um, third grade, went to Zittles Pumpkin Farm. And I believe one of the younger classes went by bus because a little too far for them to walk. But the enthusiasm from those third graders, they, they were, well, they were outside, but they were bouncing off the walls at that point. It was just, they were so thrilled. Um, and then lastly, at Sutter Middle, they had one of their first parent meetings since COVID. And it was so exciting to see the parents um, coming together they were excited about opportunities and coming from an elementary background where parents are all over everything and they usually start pulling back by secondary. It was nice to see parents engaged and wanting to be involved in some capacity. So those were the three that we've done so far and that's my report this evening. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we already had the FCLA presentation, uh, the District English Learner Advisory Committee. Good evening, Superintendent Dr. Kligan, President and members of the board. Um, I have a couple of items to report today for DLAC. Going back a little bit, on uh, October 18th, we had our DLAC meeting. A um, uh, couple of highlights. Uh, first and foremost, we have new officers um, on a two-year term. Our president is Ana Silvia Pimentel. Our vice president is Gabriela Robles. And uh, Liliana Flores will be our secretary. Um, so congratulations to our new officers for DLAC. Um, look forward to bringing them in person to a future meeting um, to the board. Additionally, on that day, we shared um, some data related to English learners, specifically the fact that they represent almost 12%, it's 11.9, 12% of the students in our district. Um, there are some interesting facts. Our English learners normally are anywhere between 2,300 to 2,500 um, count. This year already, we're seeing over 2,800 of our students are English learners. Um, and uh, just other really great facts here is that um, 
reclassified English learners last year were 344, which is fantastic. Uh, we have 345 of uh, current English learners of the 2800 I mentioned, current English learners that are um, have the beginning um, level performance to uh, reclassify. So we call those reclassification candidates. So we're looking forward to having um, either three, uh, as close to 344 students reclassified this year. So that's a, that's a win and, and an accomplishment, despite everything we've gone through and teachers and students doing great work. Uh, also parents, of course. Uh, what I do wanna highlight too is out of the 2,800 is that uh, approximately 500 of those students are what we call LTEL or long-term English learner. And this is information we share with parents. And that basically means that for some students, uh, there's a variety of reasons and, and we do a needs assessment on it, but they are not reclassifying. They'll need additional support, maybe deeper ELD. We'll investigate, continue to um, you know, address that situation, but I did, we did show that information. It's important for us to pay attention. So of course, um, moving on to the next topic is uh, Parent Summit. On Saturday, um, this last weekend on the 29th of uh, October, we held our first Parent Summit for the 2022-23 school year. And um, a few highlights that I want to share with that. First, uh, um, it's always great to see parents and it's wonderful to be in person and both the DLAC and the Parent Summit. And um, I can say every time I walk away, the contributions from the participants is always um, not only appreciated, but just uh, just fantastic. Um, and so first, um, we we one of the items on the agenda at the Parent Summit was to share the layers of funding available. There's so much that we hear about public education and general fund, and there's this money and that money. And so we, I created an opportunity or an activity where there was layers kind of, you can envision a cake, the layers of the cake and, and um, engaging and personalizing what general fund and supplemental and title one did. And that was a fun activity and uh, the parents and participants um, engaged in that. The next topic, um, the focus also was on uh, community schools and um, partnered with Carla and um, Kate on that. And they were able to um, share information about community schools, but also engage in some data collection from the parents, some input um, from the parents or some feedback from the parents. And, and that was strategically done through um, an exercise where they, they were able to learn about the pillars, um, pillar one being on student and family supports and got some feedback on that. Um, parents wanna see, you know, after school programs, I'm looking at the list of things, um, services for volunteers, transportations for families in need. Um, those are some examples and I'll share that full report at a later date. And pillar two, um, the information centers around student-centered teaching. So really just improving the practices and making sure that all students have enriched learning time and opportunities. So they wanna continue with things like Saturday school, ACEs, after-school programs, science fairs, et cetera, bilingual schools. They wanna see bilingual programs. Um, pillar three was active family engagement. Um, and that centered around things like math family nights and science fair nights and including cultural events and tutors with parents, et cetera. Um, and pillar four was about the collaborative leadership practices. And that's things like town halls or data walks or school board meetings, parent mentors, school site council, that um, ELAC, that sort of thing. And the feedback um, from the parents uh, was wonderful to see. And um, again, it was a wonderful event um, and uh, always we wanna see more parents. I was really grateful to see our superintendent address, um, as always, we can count on you. Thank you for being there. Chris Clark, it was fantastic having you participate with a group of parents. Um, and as well, we saw Mr. Ed Short um, and I'm sure I'm gonna to fail to mention others, but thank you again for your support, your continued support in parent summits. And um, for now, that's my report. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, that takes us to agenda item 10, uh, agenda consent. Is there a motion? Um, I'll move to pass agenda consent, um, but I'm gonna pull item E um, so that myself and Ms. Perez can abstain. Okay, is there a second? I'll yeah. second. Second, all right, so we have a motion by <coughs> board members Srivastav and we have a second by board member Perez. Superintendent, uh, take the roll. Um, Ms. Perez. What? She, she, she motioned it, pulling, pulling item, item, item. But are, yeah. are we recusing them from, because it is a student matter? I don't know. They'll oh, abstain. We're, we're, yeah. oh, okay. They'll abstain. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Just want to make sure that they're abstaining. Yes. All right. Well, no. The, the, 
They pulled item E off, so this is the motion on um, yeah, the rest, the rest of, of the, the motion. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Ms. Perez? I abstain. This is Sorry, for the rest, for the, the rest oh, of the consent. The Sorry. <laughs> Aye. Okay. Ms. Srivastav? Aye. Mr. Reed? Aye. Mr. Hoover? Aye. Mr. Clark? Aye. Mr. Short? Aye. Mr. Huey? Aye. Motion carries. 5 0. Thank you. All right. And then we have uh, is there a motion to approve uh, item 10 E, uh, approve expulsion re entry, case number 2122 3 S? I'll move. Uh, motion by Mr. Hoover. Second. Second by Mr. Huey. Uh, Superintendent, please take the roll. Okay. Ms. Perez? Aye. And this one you would abstain? I, would I abstain. Okay. Ms. Srivastav? I'll abstain. Okay. Mr. Reed? Aye. Mr. Hoover? Aye. Mr. Clark? Aye. Mr. Short? Aye. Mr. Huey? Aye. Okay. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, agenda item uh, 11, uh, public hearing. So let me get in. All right. This is a public hearing uh, to accept uh, Folsom Corova Education Association 2022-2023 Sunshine Openers for the successor agreement uh, to the Board of Education. Uh, Superintendent. Yes, this is the first step in the process for sunshining what we call openers. Um, these are articles in the FCEA contract for another three-year successor agreement. Um, and it's usually a longer list because we have several articles and language, a language to address um, that is a request from FCEA, as well as um, some of the uh, information and salary schedules in the appendix and MOUs. So this is an opportunity to sunshine or make them um, very clear as to which ones they'll be uh, discussing when they're at the bargaining table. And this is the first step in that process. And we welcome any other folks that might wanna share anything during the public hearing. Okay. Um... We'll take uh, any board comments uh, during the discussion action item. So we'll, this is just for public comment. Any members of the public would like to speak? No one in present. Is there anyone online? No. Comment. No. All right. Uh, so hearing no public comments, I'll close the hearing and then we'll take it up again under agenda M12. So. All right. Uh, moving to agenda item 12. Uh, a, uh, accept Folsom Cordova Education Association 2022-2023 Sunshine Openers for the success Successor Agreement uh, to the Board of Education. Superintendent. And again, this is the uh, formal action of the board to now allow our negotiating team to negotiate the articles as declared in, in the memo from FCEA, as well as the Appendix D and the MOUs. Okay. Uh, any questions from the board? Hearing no questions from the board, any questions from the, or public comment online? No, all right, back to the board. Is there a motion? Motion by Mr. Clark, is there a second? Second, second by Mr. Short. Superintendent? Yes, Ms. Perez? Aye. Ms. Srivastav? Aye. Mr. Reed? Aye. Mr. Hoover? Aye. Mr. Clark? Aye. Mr. Short? Aye. Mr. Huey? Aye. Motion carries 5-0, thank you. All right, uh, item 12B. Adopt resolution number 11-03-22-07, reinforcing implementation of board policy 5141.27, Superintendent. Yes, this was a request from our board policy subcommittee when we were looking at um, one of our board policies that um, parts of it got put on hold during the uh, pandemic, and that's uh, 5141.27, which are food allergies and special dietary needs. And what was put on hold really through our COVID um, safety plan was the ability to bring outside food in um, during that period of time. So we did have some restrictions. Our board policy didn't really change, but we did put some things on hold. So it was the wish of our policy subcommittee to bring a, a formal resolution to the board stating that we are um, going back to what it used to be, which is um, we would permit uh, the, uh, our students to bring in non-prepackaged outside food to the district campuses following our policy and, and um, timeframes of when they can do that. So it just um, reinstates what we did prior to the pandemic with a formal resolution. Okay, uh, questions from the board? 
No. Uh, so the, just to clarify, this would be like scenarios like someone uh, has a, a birthday, so they, their parents bring in cupcakes or something like that. Okay. All right. Uh, any uh, comments from the public? Any online? No All right. Back to the board. Is there a motion? Move it. A motion by Second. Mr. Short. Second by Mr. Hoover, Superintendent. Yes, Ms. Perez. Aye. Ms. Srivastav? Aye. Mr. Reed? Aye. Mr. Hoover? Aye. Mr. Clark? Aye. Mr. Short? Aye. Mr. Huey? Aye. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you. All right, next agenda item 12C, adopt resolution number 11-03-22-08, recognizing the dangers of fentanyl. Superintendent. Yes, and this is also a request that's come from our board and also our policy subcommittee to really reinforce and restate um, the dangers of fentanyl. And if you recall, we did make um, a very urgent uh, revisions to one of our board policies back in September. That was uh, 5141.21, which was administering medication, which allowed us to have Narcan available on all of our campuses as an anti-opioid um, in the event it's needed. So that uh, board <clears throat> policy was approved in September. And then the board asked that we bring back the Zach Didier story of, <coughs> again, the dangers of fentanyl and a, a student in our own and family that experienced the death of their child um, due to fentanyl. We shared that at a board meeting in October. And our policy subcommittee asked that we come back with a resolution just to reaffirm um, uh, how we are standing as a district um, against um, fentanyl, but also raising awareness. So what you have before you this evening is um, a resolution recognizing the dangers of fentanyl. I did reach out to Dr. Kasiri at Sacramento County Public Health, and I said, you know, I only have one sample of a, a, a resolution that a county board of education passed in another county. I haven't seen any with a district, but what, what was of interest to me was that they were using local statistics as well as state and national statistics. So um, she was very accommodating and in our resolution, and she shared it with all the superintendents in Sacramento County after I had requested it, it also reinforces what those statistics are in Sacramento County as well as state and national. So this, this resolution now would become um, reinforced at our school sites. I talked to Ria and Rosio about making sure that all of our ASB leaders um, are getting this back to their respective school sites. It will be on our website as well. Um, and we'll, we'll keep it prominently um, posted there. Okay, um, any questions from the board? No, any questions from the public? Yes, please. Hi, Jen, thank you. So it's not actually a question, but I love that I've obviously spoke a couple times in regards to fentanyl and the drug use, um, something that might just an idea that might be really good to add. I recently recall Folsom Police Department did a post on social media when they had done a fentanyl bust in Folsom. Mm -hmm. And I remember looking at this post. I mean, I'm obviously one of those parents that realizes it's here. But I remember seeing the social media post and thinking, I wish more people would see this to actually recognize it is literally here at home in Folsom. And it was a huge bust. It might be interesting if, with adding local statistics, maybe that there's something that the Folsom PD communicating with them. So it's actually firsthand knowledge coming from just, you know, when last week we did a fentanyl bus, cause it kind of clicks in people's heads a little bit more like, oh, this is right here. Oh, a kid here just overdosed or was admitted to the hospital or so something just to add to really kind of bring in the PD of our community when it comes to your statistics and communicating with our public and the same for Rancho, because I think it hits a little bit more home for the parents when they see when it's just now happening in that area, if that makes sense. So that's all. Thank you. Uh, any uh, public comment online? No comment. No comment. Okay. Uh, back to the board. No. All right, is there a motion to approve? Mr. Uh, President, I'll yes. move it. A motion by, okay. All right, motion by Mr. Clark, seconded by Mr. Short. Superintendent? Ms. Perez? Aye. Mr. Evasta? Aye. Mr. Reed? Aye. Mr. Hoover? Aye. Mr. Clark? Aye. Mr. Short? Aye. Mr. Huey? Aye. Motion carries, thank you. All right, uh, next item is agenda item 12D. 
adopt resolution number 11-03-22-09, authorizing the Folsom Cordova Unified School District Transportation Department to make application for the Volkswagen Environmental Mitigation Trust Fund grant. Superintendent. Yes, and this is coming after we did our presentation on transportation and our electric fleet. There is a new grant opportunity that became available and just opened up on October 31st. And in order for us to pursue this grant, uh, we, we need board approval uh, to allow our transportation director, Mr. Jim Snow, to um, submit and uh, be authorized to uh, go forward with the grant. It is a first come first serve. It's a, a competitive grant, but we could potentially qualify for over three, $3 million, $3.2 million for the replacement of eight special needs diesel buses with electric buses. So we knew we wanted to get this on the agenda as soon as possible. So with that urgency, we're asking for board approval um, for this resolution. Okay, uh, questions from the board? I'll move it. Well, well, public comment. Yeah, and, Second as well. Yeah. All right. Well, well let, let's first. Let's, let's first. <laughs> well, we can move. I, I appreciate. Yeah, that. Yeah, we yes. That. No, I know. I know. I appreciate your. Been moved, yeah. I appreciate yeah. everybody's eagerness. Uh, we're, not, we're not delaying public comment. <laughs> <laughs> um, comments from the public. Online. No All right. Uh, so we have a motion by uh, Mr. Short, seconded by Mr. Hoover. Uh, Superintendent. Yes, Ms. Perez. Ms. Srivastav? Aye. Mr. Reed? Aye. Mr. Hoover? Aye. Mr. Clark? Aye. Mr. Short? Aye. Mr. Huey? Aye. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. All right. Uh, next is agenda item 13, which is discussion. Um, first read, board policy 6153, school sponsored trips. Superintendent? Yes, and this policy was... Um, requested through our policy subcommittee to revisit um, the protocol for board approval of um, overnight field trips that happen within the boundaries of California or the state of California. Um, and when field trip requests come forward to the board, they go through an internal review process through um, Dr. Huber's office. And we make sure that we've got uh, the proper forms and chaperones and uh, itinerary. And we check all those um, boxes before we bring it forward to the board. But the change that you see in the sample policy um, allows us to do that uh, approval internally. So we, we wouldn't bring those um, within the state of California to the board, but we would continue to bring those out of state or out of country requests to the board for approval. And main reason was to uh, approve, Im improve our efficiency and um, you know try to speed up that process too, so. Okay. Questions from the board? Board President, I do have one question. Yes, um, or Huey. <laughs> sorry. Uh, Dr. Cleek, I'm wondering, uh, either on this policy or our other field trip policies, do we have any language uh, regarding students sharing a bed on an overnight field trip? We don't have any of that language in our current policy. There is a paragraph here, which it, it does broadly talk about the safety of our students. It says, principals shall ensure that teachers develop plans which provide for the safety of students and their proper supervision by certificated staff on all school-sponsored trips. So what that looks like is if it's an overnight trip, there are um, room checks to make sure students are in their rooms by a certain time. However, we also know that um, students sometimes share beds, especially if you have a large group going to an event. And Dr. Huber, maybe you can comment a little bit about some of our largest groups and, and what they've done in the past. Most of the groups um, are music groups. So it's like your marching band, et cetera, where you're talking you know, sometimes up to um, 100, 150 students perhaps going on a trip. And so it's not uncommon for there to be four or five students per room which usually ends up being two students per bed and then a student in a, you know, a rollout bed or the couch or whatever that also is in the room. So um, I know in the past there have been students that have brought uh, sleeping bags um, or things like that and they sleep on the floor. But definitely in the past we have had students you know, uh, share beds. Okay. I I'd probably have some more comments about this, but um, maybe I can save that for future agenda items. Is this something that you would like the policy committee to discuss or? Um, yeah, I mean, I, there's a lot that I find problematic about allowing students to share a bed. Uh, I realize there's a lot that's problematic about changing that policy too. It gets very expensive. Um, so, I, I mean, I think it would be worth on all of our overnight field trips to at least have a, the policy committee look at it, you know, 
kind of figure out what are the pros and cons of allowing that to happen and then um, maybe bring something to the board. All right, um, Superintendent, if we could add that to the policy committee um, agenda um, and we can have a conversation and maybe the policy committee can come back with an analysis or um, maybe a staff analysis of pros, cons of, of that. I know it's, it's, a, it's a, an age-old practice because it saves a lot of money, but I can understand in the, the modern times that might be an old, something that we, we want to get away from. So, all right. Yes, we'll, we'll bring that forward. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's see. And, and just personally, thank you very much for um, getting this uh, on the agenda. Um, I think this is a wonderful uh, uh, amendment. Uh, obviously, we're not voting on it tonight. But um, you know, we're actually um, reducing uh, bureaucracy, which is amazing. Um. <laughs> Board President, would you like us to bring these revisions back to the next meeting so we can get that done? Because we do have more field trips coming. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's get this one through. And then if we, we can do a further amendment, if, if okay. maybe. Um, Mr. President, so yeah. would that be coming back as the first read? Or are we going to try to This is not, the first read. The, the, no, but the, the approval would just be on the language that we're changing tonight, but we would be bringing back an analysis after the subcommittee looks at for be, for a future meeting. Got it. Yeah. Okay. And that's then we come back as a first read before we make any changes. All right. That's what I wanted to know. Okay. All right. Any? All right. Uh, so, again, that was just for discussion. All right. Uh, moving on to... Uh, uh, agenda item 14, information, superintendent. Yes, this item is, is for informa information this evening. This is um, the first of four meetings that our safety advisory committee me um, has held this year. They had their first meeting October 5th. Uh, there's a presentation there, and I want to thank Mr. Meyer and Mr. Martin and Mr. Ogden uh, for their leadership with the safety committee. There are others, too, and I want to thank our board members who are on that steering committee. Um, and with that, um, it is information, so it's there just uh, more for reference, unless there are any specific questions. Any questions from the board? I have a comment. Um, I just want to shout out that we had 11 students come to yes. that safety advisory yeah. committee meeting, which is the biggest turnout we've had at, I think, I'm assuming any committee. Um, so I'm really excited about that, and I just want to say thank you to all the SAB representatives who made it to that meeting. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. All right, uh, if there's no uh, else, then we will move on to the superintendent's report. Okay, I'm going to uh, toot a horn here that maybe you might not have heard, but um, Ms. Angela Griffin represented our district at the uh, Capital Region PRSA Awards. That's the Public Relation Association. They were there alongside uh, City of Rancho Cordova as well because they were receiving several awards and uh, this was posted on some of the social media channels, but I know Angela is very uh, humble and she's not going to toot her own horn. But on behalf of the district, she was there to receive three awards, um, one for external community relations campaigns with the Innovations Academy enrollment marketing that we did. That received an award. In the special events category, we received an award for the CTE ribbon cutting at Folsom High School that we did over a year ago. And then the media relations, um, the press kit for the superintendent of the year uh, that she put together also received an award. So congratulations, Angela. Thank you for doing that on behalf of the district and getting um, our, our voice out there and who we are in the community. Thank you. Thank you, Robin, too. And a couple other updates. This last week, um, we had a chance to see the, the Folsom History Museum's depiction of the 100-year history of Folsom and Folsom High School. And they're going to have their display uh, at the museum on Sutter Street open uh, for several months. So if you weren't able to be there, I encourage you to, to check it out. There's some great memorabilia and history um, about uh, Folsom High, one that was very fascinating to me were the prom dresses from <laughs> the past uh, 70 or so years. 
um, but it was it was really interesting to see our history there and the partnership there is really great too because they would like to partner with us on educational ways to to bring students in and to help um, educate them a little bit more about the history of our community so we might see a future partnership there as well so we really appreciate them doing that um, special tour and evening for us and then lastly, November, we celebrate two recognitions for the month, Filipino American Recognition Month and LGBTQ Recognition Month. And those are both on our website as well, but just wanted to call attention to that. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, moving on to agenda item 16, board member reports. I'll uh, we'll start with uh, board member Rosia. Very brief report. Um, I stopped by at my former elementary school, Patricia Shields, earlier to volunteer at their Harvest Festival. And it's always just refreshing to catch up with my former teachers and be able to interact with the students. So just wanted to say thanks to the PTA and Student Council for hosting this event. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, board members, Srivastava. No report tonight. OK. Uh, board member uh, Hui. No report. Uh, board member Schwartz. Just, just a quick report. I, I had the pleasure as a, we were talking already the DLAC and um, parent summit was really good. And we looked at the five pillars and there's a lot of good feedback with the families, but we had a large population definitely of Hispanic and Latinos there and I was able to have the opportunity to talk to them in Spanish. And one of the th bigger things that I saw or at least heard feedback was not after school support, but before school support. And as today, we went to the youth center opening in Rancho Cordova, I had the opportunity to talk to the Boys and Girls Club that's going to be running the youth center. And by the way, they say there's money available to provide some of that support for these families that need that before school, because these are working class families that need support and they have to get to work really early. And so there's opportunities they can eat, eat break, breakfast there. So I'm kind of excited that this uh, program that's coming open up in Rancho Cordova that the Boys and Girls Club will be able to provide those type of service and we can expand them. I'd like the, the board to kind of discuss this in the future, how we're going to provide these type of services for those kids and partner with the, the city of Rancho Cordova and, and the Boys and Club. So I thought that's exciting that that actually exists. So and that's all I have. All right. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Board Member uh, Clark. Thank you, Mr. President. A um, few things. Um, actually, I enjoyed the Harvest Festival put on by Riverview STEM and Rancho Cordova Elementary. And I want to give kudos uh, to those students at Cordova who were volunteering. They were having a, uh, so much fun there. Um, and actually, I played a few games at uh, Riverview STEM and I paid for it the next day. Um, Site visits, I had the opportunity to uh, visit Natoma Station, Folsom Hills, Folsom Middle, Williamson, um, Navigator, and Mather Heights. Now, I want to touch on Navigator uh, as well as a few other programs that have our, our special needs, our SPED program, our special education program. I know we're hurting. And, you know, normally when I go out there, one of the first things that I asked to see is our special our special ed kids and just to find out that we have a teacher shortage is very disheartening to me i don't know the answer i don't know how we can go out and recruit those i mean i do betty joe a couple of options but i don't know if those will work but i'm hoping that moving forward the district makes that a priority uh, especially with the ias um, i noticed that uh, we did have bus our bus drivers, and I want to thank them personally for stepping in and helping out in those classrooms, but we need to do something. Um, you know, I always say our babies are suffering, and they are. Um, we've got to try to get some support in one way or another, and hopefully we make that a priority moving forward uh, with our special need kids. Um, I enjoyed myself at the Parent Summit. I, had a chance to bone up on my Spanish, even though I don't think I did very well with the families out there. Uh, the one thing that I would like to see, however, is a way to invite more infinity groups out. I've always noticed that when we have our parent summit, it's mainly our Spanish speaking, there's a few uh, Armenian, a couple of Russian, 
but we're missing so many other families out there and we got to figure out a way to get them in and get them involved. Uh, I understand there is one in March of next year. Um, and I think that's in the evening. So hopefully we'll get more participation uh, for families who are uh, working and maybe off that day. Um, I do have a little bit of sadness, uh, sad news that I want to um, let the board and the district know that um, last, um, this past Sunday, uh, Lieutenant Colonel uh, Bob Burns lost his life, his battle with cancer. Uh, I had an opportunity about a month and a half ago to visit him, sit down and, and chat with him a little bit. He was still in good spirits. And, you know, he was so thankful that we were able to give him an honorary diploma. Um, but, you know, being that uh, next week is Veterans Day, I thought it would be fitting uh, with the board's consensus to either dedicate this uh, meeting in his honor or have a moment of silence. So um, that's it for me. Uh, to all the veterans out there, our teachers, our classified staff, I want to wish you guys uh, from one veteran to another uh, a happy Veterans Day. Okay. Thank you. Uh, board Member Hoover. Thank you, Mr. Reed. Uh, first of all, I just want to say, I think it's to Angela, but whoever was responsible and everyone that worked on it, the website looks great. So thank you for, for that and all the work that went into that. That's a fantastic uh, upgrade, I think. Um, we uh, enjoyed our time at the Rancho Cordova State of the City this week. Um, it was great to hear all the amazing uh, things going on in Rancho, including the opening of the new youth center. So that was Really great to hear. And then also um, got a chance to participate in the naming committee this week. And I think we had a really good discussion. And is that coming back for action at the next it is. Yes. one? OK, so yeah, so I look forward to discussing that further. But um, thanks to everyone that participated in that. And that's all I have for tonight. All right. Um, as for myself, um, board member Hoover and I attended uh, the two by two this morning with the city of Folsom. And uh, items on the agenda included a discussion about uh, Folsom High School landscaping along the campus on Prairie City Road and perhaps ways we can um, uh, beautify it, uh, improve it, uh, being a gateway essentially into the city from Highway 50. Um, uh, and there will be a, a, a group uh, from both the city and uh, the district that will um, brainstorm some ideas and maybe come back with something for us to look at. Um, we also talked about uh, the aquatic center that is uh, the city is looking to construct south of 50. Uh, it's probably about, uh, I think they said about 15 years, I think, off, uh, 2032. Um, uh, however, uh, we talked about maybe there might be some opportunities for uh, the school district and maybe the community college district to partner with the city to do something unique there, maybe even considering an auditorium, something that would really um, uh, you know, um, put Folsom and Cord Rancho Cordova on the map being this, uh, a facility that our schools could use. We will be having um, a, a new high school south of 50 in Rancho Cordova, which will not be, at least right now, scheduled to have a pool. So having um, an aquatic center that um, we can partner with and have uh, use of would obviously be something that would benefit our district as well. So uh, there's a group that will be getting together and um, brainstorm ideas and see if uh, we can't think of something outside the box. And maybe if we do, maybe we can elevate or, or, or move forward the timeline and we'll, maybe it won't be 15 years out, who knows. Uh, let's see, uh, we talked about uh, some student behavior issues after school um, that's occurring in the community around um, uh, Walmart uh, and ways we can try to address that. Uh, and we also provide an update on our school naming. So uh, we have these meetings uh, quarterly or every other month, Superintendent? Quarterly. Quarterly, mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, and then uh, as I've been doing uh, recently, um, I just have uh, a little excerpt to read uh, regarding 
uh, what I'm uh, describing as the boy crisis. Um, this is actually the last excerpt from this uh, article in the New York Post that I've been reading from for the last uh, uh, two meetings. And uh, let's see here, it's just two paragraphs. Um, but it reads, um, in recent years, much attention has been focused on getting women into STEM careers uh, in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. It's working, too. 27% of STEM workers are women, up from 17% in uh, 1980. Uh, but STEM occupations are a small slice of the overall account economy, accounting for only 7% of jobs. Meanwhile, the Health Education Administration and, and literacy sectors, uh, HEAL, HEAL occupations, uh, acronym, um, account for 26% of jobs. Uh, between now and 2030, uh, for every new STEM job created, there will be three new HEAL positions. Uh, women are getting into STEM, but men are not getting into HEAL. The share of men in these occupations is 26%, down from 35% in 1980. There has been a slight rise in the share of men in nursing, up to 12%, but a fall in almost every other occupation, including teaching, psychology, counseling, and social work. Among psychologists under the age of 30, just 5% are men. So that is um, uh, my little... Uh, uh, factoid to share tonight. All right, uh, let's see. We uh, covered everything. Uh, oh, no, I'm skipping ahead. We are on to, uh, let's see, agenda item, uh, uh, let's see, 17, advanced planning. Uh, the next board meeting is scheduled for November 17th, 2022. Uh, you have the 12-month calendar there for your reference. And we have the suggested future agenda items. Uh, is there any additions that anybody wants to make to the suggested agenda items? All right. Hearing none, uh, which I'm sure will make the staff very happy. Uh, <laughs> uh, that takes us... Uh, to, oh, and I was going to say, um, we covered everything in uh, closed session that we needed to, so uh, we do not need to return to closed session. And I will hand the gavel off to um, the vice president if you would like to gavel out in honor of Lieutenant Colonel Burns. You mean the clerk? Oh, the clerk. I'm sorry. It's okay. I I'll make you the vice president. Thank no, you, no, the clerk. Appreciate sorry about that. that. The, the <laughs> clerk, um, you can adjourn the meeting. Yes, I'd like to. Um Adjourn this meeting um, in honor of Lieutenant Colonel uh, Bob Burns. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you. It's not a, it's not a.